So after I had uh, failed my promise in saying that I would cover the entire series week by week as it came out, I sadly could not fulfill that obligation due to the fact that I got sick and my throat was sore and everything and I didn't have enough time in the day. So, yeah, here we are. Uh, although everyone knows what the series happened, I still love to talk about it. Uh, so, here we are. I'm like, how many times has Infinite Crisis been brought up? And yet, hold on, uh, and yet, I'm planning to cover the Absolute Edition, and I also recently got the Question Series. And yeah, that's to prove that I have the Absolute Edition. This bad boy. Uh, yes, I'm insane. The fact I own the omnibus is really, really telling. So, yeah, anyways. Um, Powers of X issue number three. Uh, this is the second printing that came out, I believe. Um, there was a lot of things going on with this issue. Um, we learned a lot of very interesting details going on in this issue alone. Um, when we thought it was the man-machine war against the mutants... It really became, it's really revealed, well, let me start off. Well, we get this introductory of Apocalypse saying, I am immortal and I have no end. Yeah, that, that's what every every immortal being likes to say. Vandal Savage did, and didn't he die eventually? Through multiple occasions. Then was resurrected, and then he was killed again, then resurrected, then the timelines got meddled up, and god, the comic universes are confusing. So yeah, um, it turns out that the Man Machine War is a lot more deeper and complex as you thought than you thought it was going to be. Instead of just being machines were created by man, and man is hunting down the mutants to the last letter. Um, and, and what we got in this issue changed everything about what everyone thought this this year one 100 was going to be about turns out that uh yeah the machines are actually enslaving the humans and converting them so to speak there's a scene where uh, this priest at this place called the temple of concordance in the church of ascendancy where basically they go ahead and uh do this rather weird, this weird religious scene where they transform a baby and convert it with black technology on its face while it's crying. And then, well, this guy was continuing to preach. All of a sudden, the four horsemen of the apocalypse arrive onto the scene. Well, at least this version of them. Rasputin, um... Uh, Red Nightcrawler, uh, Green Magneto, and Zorn, I believe, is, is the Blue Fiery guy's name is. And basically, this is all part of a big plan for what they were going to acquire in this in this risky operation. So yeah, we get some more uh, information regarding the characters, um, who these people are, and the Four Horsemen of a of apocalypse and it turns out and, and i didn't like i don't know much about the mutant lore like they say apocalypse is an external mutant not an internal one and then we got um we got the details of who the war famine death pestilence of the apocalypse of horsemen of the apocalypse is and what they say here it's um famine is krakoa uh north is um it is Pestilence, Zorn is Death, and War is Wolverine. So Rasputin and Red Knight Carl are completely different people. Oh, Cardinal, that's his name. And then there's turns out there's a person called Mother. And that made everyone curious about who's Mother. And we'll see this later on. So the Church's Ascendancy is on fire. Nimrod, I, I really can't take that name seriously. I get he was he around for decades from the Days of Future Past comics, but you gotta be on you gotta be real. Who will take the name Nimrod seriously? And even then, when we first saw Powers of X, Nimrod was at one point acting all comedic and like that, and I and I was like, am I supposed to be intimidated by a by a Nimrod, or am I supposed to to laugh I'm generally confused here because in this issue he's all 
thought processing and everything. He's all calculated. He's all cruel and vindictive. Well, as a machine can be. Well, yeah. So there. So he's been given the reports of the Church of Ascendancy on fire. Then he believes this is part of something much bigger. And subsequently, yeah, they find out that there's been a data breach. Um, yeah. So, Nimrod sends a, um, Nimrod sends that one person, I don't know her name, uh, the android, to go do something, to go investigate and take care of the attacks. And Nimrod would just continue doing what he usually does, is just look over data. So, yeah, we go back to uh, Cardinal, and he expresses how he regrets what he's doing, how he's been t given a drug that re that cuts off his moral compass because he's religious and pacifist. And then is subsequently killed by a sentinel. And Rasputin and Zorn are on their own because somehow Zorn... Because somehow... North is dead or something. But yeah, as this is going on, Apocalypse and Wolverine and, K and the living island of Krakoa, or at least a humanoid version of it, as that looks like I Am Groot or Swamp Thing, um, they're uh, cl collecting information. They're trying to gather some information about Nimrod. And Nimrod finds out and then it's like, what's this? Ah, some other agenda indeed. And so they go ahead and find the information, which is stored in this crystallized device. It's a crystal. And... And then Wolverine, with his heightened senses, smells that something's off. And sure enough, as part of the usual, he gets blasted. Man, it's by Nimrod. And he barely survives. And his limbs are regenerating. So... Yeah, Z uh, North and Cardinal's dead, so Rasputin threatens to really Zorn's singularity black hole ability he has, which she does after the other guy, uh, after the android calls his bluff, calls her bluff because that was a great idea. They have nothing left to lose now, and sure enough, it kills everyone in the process. Wolverine tries to say he wants to stay behind, Nim but Apocalypse says go. I will be right behind you. He's not coming back, is he? So Kokoa unlocks this portal. It opens itself to a portal. And and Apocalypse stays behind to battle the three Nimrods. Yeah, do you not see the problem I have with this? I, I can't take this seriously. This is supposed to be an intense moment. And yeah, I'm thinking, what? why? Like, you can't make me say... Apocalypse versus the three Nimrods and make it work. So yeah, Wolverine heads into the portal while the Nimrods are kicking Apocalypse's ass. And sure enough, as Apocalypse continues to try and fight only to get clobbered, uh, Wolverine is shown to be at this, at this sarcophagus of something. And as Apocalypse finally kills one of the Nimrods. The other Nimrods subdue him and ultimately kill him. And opening the sarcophagus reveals it's actually a cryotank containing more metagrit. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was terrible sound effect. But yeah, this is more metagrit in the future in cryostasis. And Wolverine tells her to wake up saying that they have it. And... Basically, they insert the data into this piece of her that allows her to, and obviously it's in pain. And she acquires the information into her head and then she says, and then she says she's got everything and then says, what now? And Wolverine says, there's nothing left to save. The, the man said to send you on your way and he apologizes and more Metagrit says, it's okay, I have what I need. And this, this is what you do. Wolverine stabs more Metagra in the chat, in the stomach, abdomen, and it says, "So ended the life, ninth life of Mora X, and should forever end. Let me die in battle, surrounded by my fallen enemies and with blood on my sword." Quote Apocalypse. So yeah, turns out that the Man Machine War that we saw since Powers of X One was actually, well. 
this. The whole event was the whole Ninth Life of Mormon Tagrit, which we did technically get a glimpse of, but we didn't assume, we didn't think that that was really what's going to happen. We all assumed that this was the future of, of House of X, and that would have sucked. More so. But it turns out Mormon Tagrit is, in fact... In fact, living this is the ninth life, the apocalypse route that she took. And we get some more data, some more information about the timeline of Mormon Tigre and all, all the lives, except for the one essential one that's missing, the sixth life. That would be revealed way later, as we already know when the series ended. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this was a very good issue. It really gave us clarity on what this whole event was about regarding the Mega Machine War. Um, the other thing when I was looking at this, it's like, it, it kind of gives me continuity flows when I think, look at this, is because more Metagrit has died on at least two occasions that I can think of. One would be sometime in the 2000s, and the other time would be when the Dates of Future Past event happened. The problem that is here is that that judging by this mere dis the mere thing, does that mean that this is an alternate? Does that mean when? Uh, okay, so how do I explain this? So when someone went, when the per when the person when the character went back in time to stop the Days of Future Past event from happening, they succeeded. However, there was a problem. It didn't prevent the timeline. It instead, s splintered off into another universe, leading to many confusing events. But um. Uh, yeah, it split off into another universe. The Days of Future Past timeline was prevented, but in the Marvel 616 universe, but it split it off into its own separate universe, its own continuity, which does raise one question I had. So, Mormon Tegret's life cycle thing, she has the reincarnation, does it reboot the universe, so to speak, or does it split off into his own separate universe. But that's really been the thing I've been wondering since I read all the issues. Like that that like I said, that that's the thing that confused me. Is more Metagrit's past lives eventually going to come together into eventual event storyline where all of all ten all nine lives of her past will lead to her her current life confronting them with the House of X group and the Nation of Krakoa. I finally got to pronounce that right after months of practice. Um, so yeah, that led to me thinking, so is this going to get answered soon? Will we ever get this answer? Is the universe rebooted every time she's killed? And if so, that leads to a number of continuity flubs and issues that don't really get explained. So yeah, I I'm just left to assume that more Metagrit has basically created nine different parallel universes that are based off of her actions except for the first one because that was a normal human life but now you got all this stuff and now it's like so does that mean there's like an army of man machines and then there's the the ascended group species um it just leads to a lot of questions regarding where, where this could go in the future for the X-Men as the series goes on in the Dawn of X initiative. Like, it would be kind of interesting to see more of Tagrit's eight past lives where she fundamentally altered heavy events um, come together and eventually, you know, try and tear down what she's created with, with the tenth life, her final life. So, it's going to be curious where this goes. So, yeah, um, Powers of X, uh, along with the series, honestly, I can say at this point, I can sorely recommend this series, and I enjoyed every moment of it. Um, there's also going to be another video soon, um, but I do plan to talk about uh, The Question, along with the two Harley Quinzel books. <laughs> yeah, I never got around to talking about them, uh, and I've had these for two month for about a month now. Um yeah, there's, I've been buying a lot of comics lately in order to catch up with the lore and everything and instead of waiting for trade paperbacks. Um, I might do trade paperbacks and hardcovers again, but uh, yeah. 
So, Powers of X, issue two, I mean, issue three, um, enjoyable read, got some clarity on what's, on what things were people were wondering about, like, this was Jonathan Hickman's style, basically, he'll tell you certain stuff, and then keep everything else a mystery till like, 15 chapters in, and then we'll start to unravel the plot bit by bit by bit. So, yeah. These were my thoughts on Powers of X by Jonathan Hickman. Then issue number three, this was Neo Reality and Tim. If you like, comment, subscribe, and donate. Stay tuned for more, and I'll see you all in two weeks, basically.